Special thank you to Seed and Stone Cidery and Lucky Buzz Meadery for sponsoring the show today. Uh, they help to make this show possible and supply us with uh, the occasional beverage when we're out there. They've got 10 uh, taps full of meads and ciders made right there in house. They've also got all sorts of awesome events going on, including an open mic uh, almost every single Thursday where you can come out and show your musical talent. So all you songwriters out there, uh, stop out and grab a cider or a mead and tell them that the songwriters couch and the Patrick Joan band sent you again, seen in stolen cidery right here in Rochester, New York, go out and visit them and let them know we sent you. Thanks guys. All right, welcome to the Songwriter's Couch, episode number 12. Uh, and on the show today, we've got uh, the uh, the amazing Matt Plessinger. Oh, thank did I, you. Did I screw it up already? In the... You said I'm amazing. That's the... <laughs> so uncomfortable for me. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. It. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've been, uh, we've been talking about kind of getting together and doing something, uh, you know, something like this together. And then we've got actually now a, a songwriter showcase thing that's yeah. coming up too up um, to in the next few weeks. I don't know if this will actually come out before that, but if not, we had a great show. Yes. Uh, if this has already it's come stellar. out, if not, we're so excited to see you guys. You got to be there uh, at the show. You got to be there. Or thank you for coming. One or the other, right? Um, <laughs> but, but thanks for coming out. Um, and uh, I think part of the reason that that uh, I've kind of always admired your your playing is because you do a lot of kind of finger picking and and a lot of the um, you know uh, what 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 would you call that style of of guitar playing? Because there's a few <clears throat> few guitarists out there that do kind of similar, you know, lots of like. I, I, why don't you explain yeah. what it is that uh, I guess well, there's, that... there's a lot of different like names for it. there's like modern percussive acoustic guitar, but I think the general blanket terms finger style guitar. So it involves like a few different techniques that are taken from like classical guitar, but also like Spanish flamenco and like even rock elements with like finger tapping and stuff. Yeah, like Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So it's kind of like a combination of all those techniques to be able to simulate like a full band feel where you have like your bass line, you have like a rhythm section for guitar, you have a melody and kind of combining everything hmm. so that each, each finger and you know, each, yeah, each it's part. almost like its own instrument. Like yeah. you're, you're a full band almost with the yeah, guitar. Exactly. Yeah. And I dig it. I've never, I've never fully like gotten into the, you know, all the percussive stuff that, you know, that you're doing the finger tap a little bit, like, cause I grew up in the eighties, you know, so yeah. I watched, you know, Eddie Van Halen and my older brother is you're like, I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I used to do that <laughs> stuff. Uh, but I never, I never quite got good in it. So I, was, I always took myself as like, all right, I'm a rhythm player. I can write songs. So I'm kind of got to stick in my lane just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but before we go any further, I do need to do a shameless 
shameless plug, and then I'll let you do a shameless plug, too, oh, before the episode starts. This way, uh, if anyone's watching now, go and download and, and like and do all that kind of stuff there. Uh, and as well, subscribe to the, the YouTube channel. Uh, but thank you to our sponsor, Seed and Stone Cider. Uh, we're drinking some stuff over here mm-hmm. somewhere. Uh, and Lucky Buzz. Uh, and uh, they're doing a lot for the music community here. So they're they're really been uh, uh, partners with us. So we really appreciate it, you guys. And uh, if you're in Rochester, go ahead and, and go out there and buy a drink. And then where can people kind of find some some of your uh, artwork, I guess you can say, yeah. art? Um, I, have a, I have a band camp. So if you want to find my old EP from when I was 19, <laughs> um, you can listen to that on Bandcamp. It's mattplessinger.bandcamp.com. Or you can find me, I'm a, a little more active on Instagram these days, so you can find me on um, Matt Plessinger Solo Guitar on Instagram. Right on. You can also find me on Facebook. And, Any yeah. TikTok? Are you doing TikTok? I'm not you? on TikTok yeah, yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, haven't, I, think... I haven't broken that, <laughs> that section of the market. <laughs> yeah, I try and stay away. I think, I think my daughter uh, convinced me to uh, download it. And like, oh, you should do stuff on there. And I, I, there's maybe like five TikToks that I made total for the band. Yeah. Um, and I haven't touched it since. I feel like it's there. There are states that are like banning it. And yeah. so, like, I'm like, what? You know, there must be something. That, like, there can't be just nothing behind them banning an entire app like that in the United States. But who knows? I, I feel like maybe they're they're mining information or whatever. So maybe. I, I've I've uh, I've taken it off my phone at this point. I feel like TikTok's just kind of like unhealthy in general. Like, yeah. I feel like there was just days where like I I deleted it. But, oh, did you? you yeah, did I had it for a while and I deleted it because and then Facebook and all and yeah. and Instagram copied it. So now you just got yeah. a TikTok clone on. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You got like reels now where you can just like scroll like, yeah. endlessly. But I, yeah, days would just get completely away from me on, with TikTok. And I felt like. What was, was your just... favorite stuff to watch? Was it the. Uh, the uh, we were talking about this on, on Sul- uh, Sully's episode. <laughs> where... I'd like to say it was like intellectual stuff like, oh, like crazy musicians yeah. or like, you know, fascinating nature or whatever. That I'm inter- stuff that I'm interested in, but no, it was just like memes and like yeah, yeah. mindless like. That I think that's pretty much. I don't think there is a lot of intellectual content, <laughs> or maybe there is. Maybe I'm mistaken. Is there? Is there elect- intellectual content on TikTok? There's got to be. Um, I don't have TikTok. Oh, okay. So, so we're all too old in the room, I think, to to comment on the intellectual <laughs> uh, content on TikTok. So what what got you into, I guess, uh, music in general? Um, and then how did you get into the path of like doing that new style, uh, acoustic guitar playing and that sort of thing? Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of got into music because of, um, because of my friends. Um, we kind of, we went to this thing called pit stock when we were kids. Hmm. So it was like a backyard Woodstock kind of like mimic. And it was literally just, it was a sponsored event. They had like all kinds of like food and they had like a little skateboarding company that was sponsored it. But you know, all these local bands would show up and they'd play in this person's backyard and we just went because it was free and it sounded fun. <laughs> so we we went to this guy's backyard and we were 13 and we were sitting around the campfire at the end of the night. And there's this guy playing a melodica and we were like, dude, how do you get girls? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's a melodica? I don't even know what a that is. A melodica is, is uh, it's like a piano that has like a tube that you oh, blow yeah, into. Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's yeah. literally, it sounds like a harmonica, but you can play the notes like a piano. Yeah. So he was playing that and he was <laughs> wicked good at it. And, and there were just f- f- flocks of girls around him <laughs> as he played this, this uh, piano. <laughs> no, he was just older and we saw him as somebody who yeah, could, cool right? And we were like, oh, right. like, Give us your knowledge. And he's like, you just have to be good at something. Just be good at anything oh. and do it well. Like, and I took that to heart. <laughs> we all, I think we all did. We all yeah, got, don't worry about that. You could just leave that too. That's not gonna okay. really. um, but we got, we all got instruments. So how come you didn't pick up the, what is it called? The, What's that? What is the instrument called again? Oh, melodica. Well, how come you didn't pick up the melodica then and, and take that on as your instrument? Just didn't. Fit. Well, so me and all of my friends got instruments. My friends started out getting a bass guitar, and then we started a band, and it was oh. called Amplified. And it was awesome. <laughs> and we just like we would make twelve minute songs that were mostly nonsense, but there's a lot of good little bits in them. And did did anyone actually know how to play any instruments before, or like what was the? No, we just started fresh. Um, my buddy Stefan. He 
started bass guitar for a while and then he started getting lessons and then it was kind of like this um it's almost like competitiveness in me that kind of like awoke out of that because <laughs> i would see him getting so good and i was like i want to do that i want to yeah. be that good and like i would have to, i would just go in my room and practice for six hours and then we'd come to band practice we'd show each other what we made and like riff off of it there's a lot of weed involved so yeah, we'd get yeah. high and just like jam <laughs> for like hours and like drive our parents crazy i'm sure what was any of your uh family musical too Did you have like musicians in your family too? yeah um a lot of my family actually my grandma was a piano teacher um my dad did you learn piano when you were never no huh. but i i'd started out on trumpet that was the first instrument i ever played hmm. and i played it long enough to learn taps and i was like that's all i need <laughs> that's, just, that's, that's like, all anyone any yeah. musician needs as long as you can play taps you're good right you're good on that especially with trumpet it's just like a very <laughs> characteristic trumpet do you still so, have a trumpet it's buried somewhere in my basement i think you should bring that out to open my <laughs> open my and just <laughs> blow <terrible>. people <laughs> yeah just real <laughs> start playing taps in the middle of the, the open <laughs> mic <laughs> <laughs> so with the trumpet is it because i've i've tr made an attempt to play a trumpet before right and, and i yeah. say made an attempt because i didn't even get as far as taps but like <laughs> you're making the majority of the note with your mouth right it's not necessarily the kids there's only three keys on there so yeah so it's i don't even really remember it but you can like raise pitch with just your mouth and then it's kind of like I'm guessing intervals with the three buttons. Hmm. It's like different intervals, almost like a pedal steel or something. I really honestly don't know. Yeah, you don't even remember. Was it in school you learned how to play it in yeah, school? Yeah, I learned it in school. It hmm. was so long ago now. But So then, so so you're in this band, and you're getting kind of competitive, and you're sitting there. Which, yeah. by the way, to anyone, any aspiring musicians, that's kind of the... Um, the typical path that happens like you you're young you see maybe some musician out there whether it be a bit a, like a professional band or someone yeah. you know that's playing music locally or your older brother or your cousin whatever your your uncle uh and you're like oh i want to do that and then you pick up an instrument and you're like oh, i'm terrible at this <laughs> right and then you either do one of two things either you end up being like yeah screw that and maybe you just start singing something right or then there's there's a number of musicians then that just say you know what i need to just keep doing this for hours and hours and hours yeah. and you sit in your room or you sit wherever and you just play constantly and eventually uh you get better and then people start telling you oh you're such a good you know you're so talented you've got you know you're you're such a great guitar player yeah. when in actuality it was oh, just it's practice yeah it's, it's <laughs> practice and and being completely alone in your room playing with nothing but your guitar absolutely um, yeah that was a yeah <laughs> um but then so so you went from being in this kind of i guess teenager band yeah right, to then what now you're you're more of a solo artist did you days. did you did you guys like have any gigs where you went out and played or was we it did, like <laughs> we did have a few gigs they were pretty funny though i mean we were we were like 15 16 and it was mostly me and stefan that had the gigs and i remember there's one gig we played out in this middle of nowhere like campsite and we played poolside for like three people and we just like <laughs> jammed out for like 40 minutes and the woman that hired us to do it didn't even come outside to listen to us she just <laughs> opened her window from like there's like a building next to the pool and she just yeah. opened the window in her office and listened to us. And she's as like, long as halfway so through good. a song though, that she didn't close the window, <laughs> then, I, then you know, it's all right. You know? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. So buy a pool at a campsite. Yeah. Man. I think it was called skyline resort. Huh. If I remember right. That's all. Those, like those are the out most by like Darien Lake. Like when say. you're doing like those there. kind of gigs, they're they're You know, you kind of think like, Oh, it's not, you know, oh, oh, this is, you know, not the stadium that I was hoping to be playing in front yeah. of hundreds of thousands of adoring fans. Um, but looking back on those gigs uh, is always like, I always like the story of them. Like I have fond <laughs> memories of like terrible, terrible gigs in the middle of nowhere. I played in Niagara Falls once me and my, my old drummer and it was on the American side of Niagara Falls, which if anyone knows Niagara Falls, the American side, for some reason, is not anywhere close to the Canadian side yeah, in terms of like how cool it is. <laughs> like it's just run down and, and like everything's, everything's closed. So um, we had a gig at this bar 
right next to the bar was a police station, but the police station was all boarded up. <laughs> so there was no there was no police in there at all and oh, it was all man. bored up and then the bar was like the only thing for like miles in either direction on the street and we get in there there's nobody in there we had traveled you know an hour and a half whatever it takes to get up there uh from here was it two hours something like that um yeah. and we got and we literally played to the bartender uh, but the bartender and the waitress were dancing and like like getting to screaming eh! Like, oh, yeah. It was one of the most fun gigs. They paid us, gave us food, food, and you know, all that kind of thing. Um, so cool. But looking back, it was it was. It's kind of sad. It's like I feel bad for these people. They hired me to do this thing. Nobody's yeah, here. Yeah, well, I, I think what they were hoping was that we would somehow magically bring you know a bunch of people to their yeah. their random bar in the middle of uh, nowhere, Niagara Falls. But anyway, uh, so so you started. You kind of did a few gigs with them. Did you immediately then start writing stuff on your own, or was it like during that time you were? I think there, there was like a shift for me where like I I was playing electric guitar in that band, and I think at one point I bought I got an acoustic guitar as a gift. I like really wanted one because it's like a good practice tool if you're an electric guitarist. Um, you can really st- like strengthen your hands by just playing acoustic guitar. If you yeah. play electric guitar a lot, you get like kind of soft fingers. So I was building up tensile strength with just playing acoustic a lot. And the more I started playing acoustic, the more I was like, I just like playing acoustic better. Like <laughs> I just like it. It feels better. And it feels more me. And like the, uh, the, eventually, like the stuff we were kind of doing individually was not coming together as well. Mm. Like, Stefan was kind of playing, like, solo bass, like, finger tap heavy kind of stuff. And that was the stuff he really liked to play. And, like, I was kind of writing more, like, um, Travis Picking style, like, finger plucking stuff. And there wasn't a lot of, like, stuff that meshed well that we were creating. So it kind of forced us to kind of write our own songs. And I think out of that, like, I became more comfortable as a musician Mm. in, in the stuff I was making. And I was more confident in it. Did you start um, when when you started writing songs? Was it something where you were imitating almost um, like some like your inspirations, and then um, you know eventually you have your own, you get into your own thing? But um, yeah, like in in a way, yeah, like a lot of the different like um, like percussive techniques was stuff like I watched a guy do like Daniel Champagne or like Alan Gogol, Andy McKee, like John Gum. Those are all guys that like when I was 18, 19 years old, I was listening to them hmm. and I was seeing what they were doing. I was like, that's crazy. And like, I started by just like, and like <laughs> right. that evolved into like a more cohesive thing. And there's like some songs that kind of got scrapped on the way that I made that just weren't up to par or up to snuff with what I like. Do you feel so? So you made me think about something. So when I was probably 17, 18, um, I mean, I still have eclectic musical taste and I'll still find new, new musicians and new music that I like. Um, but I feel like everything, um, at least when you're, when you're first starting out becoming a musician or first start, uh, really getting into music, um, you tend to like go to the outskirts of, of like the genre you're into mm. and listen to all this like crazy stuff. And I feel like, at, at, and you can see this with like older musicians when you go places, they kind of stop at some point, like finding new inspiration. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I feel like sometimes that can be, you know, at the detriment of their, you know, their music too, because you, you know, you're not getting inspiration from this new stuff that's coming out. Um, Absolutely. Are you still finding like new, new music now? I would um, say like not super in the finger style world anymore i would say that's kind of like more of a comfort space now Hmm. like when i listen to finger style music it's like i already know like the guys i love very much and when they release new stuff i'm all about it but it it i I have discovered some guitarists in recent in like the last year that have really blown me away but Hmm. i think like seeing people in rochester even like i've been going to open mics now consistently for like two ish years and just seeing people 
that just do incredible things in person, like yeah. every single week has yeah. been very inspiring well, it's, to it's me. super, uh, like, especially here in Rochester, um, and there, there's music town. So, like, you know, you go to you go to Nashville or you yeah. go to, you know, New York City or even L.A., sort of. Um, you sort of see new stuff coming out. But yeah. it's a little more, like, people are, are very much about the image a little bit more in, in yeah. L.A. it tends to be. Um, so they don't want to get up and look stupid sometimes is what yeah. I feel a little bit. Even though the comedy scene out there is great, which is such a weird dynamic. Like, the comedy <laughs> scene is great, but, like, I, I see, like, musically people are very concerned like about how up. they look as a musician, you know, um, which is very L.A., very, like, you yeah. know. Know, California, but um, I, I feel like you you get exposed at an open mic to individuals that are just starting on their, um, you know, finding their voice or finding their style. Yeah, and so it tends to be really fresh. And they may be thinking about all these inspirations and all the stuff they wrote while they're in their you know their bedrooms figuring stuff out. Yeah, and then they go out and they play it. But I watch sometimes, like that's like like you said, just amazing musicians or amazing artists. Even maybe they might not even be great technically, yeah. Um, but like right. what they're doing is so n- fresh and so new, uh, yeah. and they may not even realize it. You know, they go out there and they feel like they're uh, uh, you know not doing well because they're not technically doing stuff um, well or or precise. Yeah. Um, but but that kind of thing inspires me, and and a lot of times. I'll go up to them and I'll start talking to them because they'll introduce me and they'll say like, oh yeah, you know, I've really been listening to such and such lately and I had no idea what they're, you know, who this person is or who the musician is and I'll get exposed to all this new music that then helps me kind of evolve myself too, you know? Absolutely. Um, so if, if tapping and, and all that kind of stuff, right, sure. was kind of added to an acoustic guitar, I, I look back at like, um, like uh, um, Eddie Van Halen, right? Mm. And he kind of made all that stuff, I guess, brought it to the forefront. Like it was happening before him, yeah. but he really brought it out there. I'm wondering, like from an acoustic guitar standpoint, like how did that transition happen? And, and I think I have an idea. It's in music? In so general? like... It went from being a very electric guitar kind of thing, you know, yeah. shredding on a guitar in the 80s, like those, you know, hair metal bands and that sort of thing, um, to then being a really, like, acoustic, you know, adding in the percussion, mm-hmm. adding in all this. Um, what's the guy's name you said, Pat? Um, uh, is it McGee? What's his name? Andy McKee. Andy McKee. There. Andy McKee. Uh, completely messed up his name. <laughs> um, but like, so, so I've heard his name a bunch of times, and you could tell like, I don't know his name. So My I don't. Hero. I don't. Yeah, I don't listen to a lot of a lot of his stuff. But I, I will definitely. Um, but like, were they? Do you believe he was inspired by like Eddie Van Halen, or do you think it was oh, oh, something yeah. that was and Andy for sure? I'm sure he he kind of had like a similar start to me where he started i think he started on electric guitar and he kind of like was playing like he was playing more like shred stuff at first and yeah. stuff like that but he got really inspired by somebody named michael hedges michael mm. hedges is the guy who's kind of like known as like the guy who like made finger style explode and made it what it is he's like the guy who took all the pieces and put them together and did something that like nobody else was mm. doing so he was playing you know, i've definitely heard of michael hedges before He's incredible. Um, he unfortunately passed away, I think, in the nineties. Um, so, and, speaking but, of the nineties, though, that's kind of what I was getting to. So, in the nineties, um, you know, you had Nirvana and you had Pearl Jam. You had all those alternative bands that were kind of coming out that were like the antithesis of the eighties hair metal right. shredding that sort of thing, right? So it was this yes. weird combination of like, you know, they grew up on those that music. Um, or were inspired that by that music, but then tried to make it more raw. And then MTV came out with their Unplugged series, mm-hmm. right? And you're probably too young to actually I, have... I had a DVD, actually, Did of you? Nirvana Unplugged. There you go. So, so <laughs> those, those Unplugged series is when the changeover, I feel like, moved heavily to like acoustic guitar, mm-hmm. right? So a lot, of, a lot of people that were in bands and stuff were very like you know heavy you know heavy distorted lots of effects all that sort of stuff mostly electric and then as soon as that uh unplugged series came out everyone had 
acoustic guitars and we're and we're like okay let's just go completely clean let's you know let's do that i mean you had dave matthews which was from a guitar player standpoint is a phenomenal guitar player especially yeah. that he can play some of the stuff he plays and, and sing, sing it at the same, same time, time. Yeah. it's like very difficult and, and and i see that with you too because you're doing some technical stuff um and I feel uh, that 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 takes a lot of practice, but but I think like somewhere in the '90s there, it went from like okay, we're a lot of electric stuff to all of a sudden being this acoustic thing, and then you have like Backstreet Boys and all that stuff that yeah. came after, <laughs> came immediately after that as like the answer to it. Um, but uh, so so where do you see kind of your music going from here? I mean, do you have? Um, I mean. I'd love to get some of my music out there. I think like the whole studio process and like the money investment is like daunting. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like a huge commitment, but I, well, I, I think, have the material. Yeah. I think that at this point though, you could probably find someone. I mean, I could record you here and then it's just a matter of mixing and mastering that. I'm not, I'm not at all good at, but there's, okay. you, so here's a, here's a tip for everyone out there. Um, so there's a, a app called Fiverr. F I V R maybe if they want to sponsor us, um, <laughs> but it's a, it's a big app, but, but they, um, what it is, it's kind of like a, uh, uh, an app that you can hire people to do things. And it's yeah. usually relatively inexpensive compared to like, if you were to just go to like a, you know, a major studio for instance, right. And get, uh, your stuff mixed and mastered. There's people on there that are just coming out of school or whatever. And then they'll do a mix and a master for like 50 bucks on a song, or they'll do animated videos or they'll do, yeah. you know, paintings. So there's all sorts of like just artists and, and freelance musicians and stuff. Like you can get backup singers or a violin player to play on something, things like that. Yeah. Um, that's but cool. yeah, I mean, uh, if if you want to record something, we can we can do something here, Matt. Don't you worry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think like I'd love to get some of my material out there and more accessible because I think that's like a common question. Is like people see me play live and they're like, "Where's your stuff? Where can I listen yeah. to you?" And I'm like, ha, "Yeah, <laughs> I wish I could tell you." <laughs> well, that, that's a good. Uh, that's a good point too. Is is you know we talked on the last episode with with Chris about where opportunity. Uh, meets um, uh, preparedness, I guess, right? Preparedness. Is that a word? Preparedness. I think it yeah, is. that's a word. Where, you know, like where you're prepared and then the opportunity finds itself. And, and when you play, I see people look like, oh, he's really good. Um, and so having something like that there, I think, is is where, you know, where success meets, where you have that that stuff. But but For sure. when you're writing songs, right, because I kind of want to get to the crux of like why you write music right like where does the obviously when when you first started you were like that guy's cool i bet he gets yeah. girls so I'm, <laughs> yeah. gonna, I'm gonna learn how to play guitar right <laughs> uh, but now it's probably become a part of your your life in a way that you didn't probably think it was going to be uh back yeah. then so when you write songs is it generally something where you're writing you know you're like you, you want to write a piece of music or is it something where you're writing a song about something that's happened in your life or, you know, like where does your inspiration tend to come from mostly? Mostly it's, it's like a cathartic thing. Mostly it's just like, I either have an idea for a song or like I'm screwing around with my guitar and I find like a nice tuning or something and I find like a little riff I like and I go like, oh, I got to make this like a thing. I guess it has to exist now. Yeah. And like, I like whatever I'm struggling with, whether it be like something emotional, something in, like external, like the world or like, what's going on in the world, like something that's bothering me that I just need to get out. Usually that's how I like write a song. So I have a lot of breakup songs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, hmm. Do, and so when you're writing, do you, and I ask if this of every songwriter pretty much because um, I feel like uh, it, it's people have this this uh, thought that songwriters sit down and they figure out okay this is like like Mozart you know his, his eyes are closed and he's deaf and but he's just writing from his you know in his mind <laughs> yeah. this symphony of things but usually that's not what it is right that's like you said you're like once yeah for me. you're like fooling around a <laughs> guitar and you're like oh that's kind of nice yeah and you know why does that sound good and and i've equated it to like a memory of a song or whatever um, but where you're coming up with something and then you write it like is it generally like in the morning you're fooling around with your guitar or is it where you have because you you well you have lyrics to your 
to your songs. I feel mm-hmm. like your songwriting is more on the musical sure. side of it. And the lyrics are kind of like a melody that fits over it yeah. more so than it being like lyrically or story driven necessarily. Typically, yeah. Like I don't write a lot of ballads. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would say like most of the stuff starts with the guitar. Like most of it's like I'll find like a tuning like, oh, like I tune this string down like a half step and suddenly like dad gad is like this like it's got this like seventh in it yeah and it's like oh like i gotta do something with that like and then i start noodling i find like a like a couple notes that fit in with like some open strings and suddenly it's and it's like oh that's fucking awesome i want to do that i gotta make something out of that yeah that sounds beautiful i've written i've written a bunch of songs uh when i've broken strings and not had money to buy new strings and so i'll like lose you know like (laughs) one and then of course i'll be playing really hard maybe have a couple extra whiskeys you know what i mean hit it harder and then i'm i'm missing like three of them i've only got like four (laughs) strings or one of three strings left (laughs) if i can count Um, it reminds me of my friend noah my friend noah who is also an amazing guitarist that you need to listen to his name is hemlock sun on the interwebs he's incredible he's an incredible uh williamson based musician but he has like a whole catalog like basically an album's worth of material that he wrote without i think it's the fifth string he broke this on one of his guitars he never replaced it and he just like kept writing songs and now like (laughs) he said he's like tried to play those songs over again with like a six string and it just doesn't it doesn't work like the feel is wrong or like the extra note just like ruins it (laughs) so he has like eight ten songs of just like five string guitar yeah yeah and now he has like a guitar that's specifically just it's, for those it's songs. interesting what those yeah like what uh was that necessity um is the mother of invention is that what they say mm. right you're awake over there you know right necessity, uh, mo- the <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention say it in like a morgan freeman voice Necess- like, i don't know if i can imitate morgan. necessity <laughs> that was pretty good. That was, that was pretty good. Um, <laughs> so um, when you're when you're writing and you're writing lyrics to it, so it's generally do you do you come up with the the guitar part first, and then you generally, get into yeah. your your lyric stuff? So so sometimes it's like I'll have like a chord progression, and like I'll have like I'll start writing like uh, like a hook or something, and like I'll get the hook part down, and then like. I'll find room to do like more advanced guitar stuff that has happens a lot more like seldom than just like I write a whole guitar piece and then I make, I make the lyrics mm. work. That happens a lot more often, but is it something where you have the lyrics already typically? Or are you writing? No, I usually like, if I don't have the music, I'm not writing the lyrics. That's to, some people write the lyrics first and I feel like it's I'm gonna top you off there. Too. To me, it's, it's, it's like too, it's too like you put, you're putting too rigid borders on it. So like you, you, you feel like you have all these lyrics, you have all these words and you have to cram them into this thing that yeah, you're making f- in the moment. I feel the same way. I've actually written. So I've, <laughs> I've been in the car and I have some sort of a, a background, um, song that's going on to the lyrics and I write all the lyrics out and I have the rhyme. So sometimes it's, it's at the gym. If I'm like on the treadmill, or I'm on a you know bike or something, I'll be, I'll be furiously typing it to whatever's going on in my head. And then I go home and I try and actually write music to it. Cause it was kind of like a vague idea of right. what was behind it. And it never, it never ends up coming to fruition no matter what. But then sometimes like months later, I can actually fit it into something, which is cool. But, um, very, very few and far between that, that occurs. So, right. um, well, who are your influences? So I know you said, uh, well, I'd say like it, for me, it's very much like I have singer influences and then I have guitarist. Influences. Who's your singer influences? So I'd say like John Mayer, the biggest one, it's Jeff Buckley, hands down. Uh, Jeff Buckley, you do my have, dude. yeah, you do have that that Buckley. Uh, Je- I found Jeff Buckley when I was like going through a breakup. Oh, I found I found his perfect album Grace. Jeff Buckley yeah. time, <laughs> timing, yeah. <laughs> and like I was just reaching a point where like I could do the things vocally that he was doing. Mm. Like I had, I was taking lessons at the time for vo- for voice, and I was just starting to get to a point where I could sing like songs like him, and I was. And it felt like so freeing. Like I felt like I had this register that a lot of men didn't have that w- were singing low and like throaty and like I-, I wasn't that kind of singer. So like I-, I didn't feel a lot like a lot of guys that were singing 
Mm. And when I heard Jeff Buckley, I was like, that's, that sounds like me. Like, yeah, it felt so right. So I'd say Jeff Buckley out of everybody, he's the biggest influence I have vocally, but I'd say like if there was a top three, it'd be like John Mayer, Jeff Buckley, and like Derek Wibley from Sum 41. Huh? I don't know. I don't know too many Sum 41. They're just shaking her head over there. That was like my childhood <laughs> favorite <it>? band. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a, come with kind of like an emo, uh, is yeah. it that emo um, world? Yeah, like, like, uh, like early 2000s pop punk. All right. Yeah, pop punk version, more pop punk of Green Day. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's accurate. Avril what about? Avril yeah, oh. Derek Wibley was Avril Lavigne's husband. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, all right. For years. All right. Uh, and then Until guitar. They so obviously guitar playing, you went over a, a few. Did you get inspired by, I mean, because you said you started out on electric. So who were your, like, your electric guitar mm. uh when, I was, when I was playing electric guitar, I was listening to a lot of Grateful Dead. So I was trying to do a lot huh. of like lead guitar stuff like Jerry Garcia would do, but I was more of a Bobby player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was more of like a rhythm guy. I would play like the upstrokes and like mute the downstrokes yeah. and do like little ska kind of oriented stuff. And I'd say, yeah, I'd say like Grateful Dead, like Real Big Fish. I was doing a yeah. lot of like the ska kind of like rhythmic stuff at that time. Um, when was pa- Panic of the Disco was who? That was uh, tw- late 2000 or is that later? Or early? Is that around the same time? I just started getting into all... I think I told you this. I just started getting into like emo stuff. Like <laughs> Reasonably, yeah, my, my Chemical Romance stuff like this oh, year man. is when I started. This year? <laughs> yeah. Because I grew up... You like uh, just discovered the Black Parade that's right. 20 years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I do, I do a cover <laughs> of it sometimes now acoustically. Um, that's like a... That's like a... <laughs> Don't stop believing bar song. It's like the whole bar <laughs> will erupt in Welcome to the Black Parade it's if you start true. singing. It's very true. I write I write sins, not tragedies, too. You start doing that mm, in any yep. bar with anyone under 50. <gasps> oh, ev- e- yeah, everyone. Everyone's singing. <laughs> Oh, we're not going to play that. Yeah, we might get a, a copyright oh, strike. Because I do it that well that they might think that we're actually playing it. Uh, Oh, over the oh, Gerard Way, when did you get here? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I gotta have the black uh, eye makeup and stuff <laughs> on, though. Um, so, do you see yourself now like forming a band, Matt, or, or do you think you're probably gonna stick mm, with the solo thing? And- nah, I think I think I'm more of a solo artist. I think like doing collaborations is really fun for me. I think doing like like oh, I'm playing like a song with like a couple people. That feels right. Or it's like a piano player and like a singer or like a, a horn player or something. That feels like intimate and like right for my style of music. But hmm. I think like a full band. Maybe if I was just a singer, I yeah. think that could be really fun. But as a guitarist, I feel like I just do. I feel like my time is too shit to be in a band. Hmm. Like I just can't count time. Yeah, your time. <laughs> yeah. I think you're, you're pretty good. If you can, if you can like sing along with what you're doing. I mean, what what? Let me ask you this. Sure. What did it take? Because I remember trying to play. Um, oh, what was it? This. So that Dave man. and trying to sing along with it and it took me so long to be able to actually like do it um do you did you play guitar first and then have to learn how to sing along with it or was it something Mm. where you were kind of like learning both and like both of them kind of followed each other you're like you're you're i think singing was something like when i first started doing it i wasn't really trying to do it to be good at it it was kind of like I would blast some 41 songs, I'd blast Blink-182 songs, and I would fucking belt them as loud as I can. And, like, if I was singing too loud, like, I would raise the music up louder, and then I would be singing, like, yeah. at that. You know, like, <laughs> I was just, like, dancing in my room, like, singing to, like, a fake microphone, and, like, having people walk in and, like, being embarrassed. Like, that was, like, a huge part of my singing upbringing. It was just, like, <laughs> singing the songs that I loved. And a lot of people do, almost everybody I know does that in their car. You yeah, know? you know, I've, I've asked people, like, oh, you know, joking around, like, oh, do you do you sing too? Because they, they, oh, you're a musician or whatever. I'm like, yeah, are you a musician too? You know, do you, and, and then they always say, oh, I, you know, I sing like to songs, but, but that's it. I'm like, oh, so you can sing yeah, then, you probably, sing. you know, cool. it's, it's like this disbelief that they can do, like, if you're singing in your car, you're probably sort of maybe on 
in key, yeah. you know, and if you get a little bit of ear training, a little bit of like training, you know, you'd, you'd maybe be able to do it. Um, right. Did you, you said you took lessons on voice. Did you mm-hmm. take any guitar lessons ever? Like, not really. I had like, I was part of like a summer program at this music school where it was like, it was called I'm in the band and you basically join a band and you audition and they like put you together with people they think you're going to play well with. Hmm. And then you make like five, six songs together and then you perform it. Oh, that's Um, cool. And that happened when I was like 18. And after that, like after I did, did the whole band situation, I was like, I had, my teacher was basically like, you're a better singer than you think you are right now. (laughs) And like, you just can't control anything. He's like, you're controlling it the wrong fucking way. And like, I'm going to teach you. (laughs) You just, just like take lessons with me and like, I'll teach you. And I did. And like, just learning how to control my voice better and like put pressure in the right places and like support in the right places just changed my ability, changed my range. It changed like how much I can do with my voice. Hmm. So that was really freeing and yeah, I, I, um, I took a, a singing lesson with, um, it was one of the first singing lessons I've ever taken in my entire life because I grew up just kind of playing in bands and, and kind of learning by doing. Uh, but I think I was really screwing up my voice by doing mm-hmm. that. And I didn't, I don't think that I, um, I, I uh, gave myself the range that I actually had because right. I didn't, I didn't learn how to actually hit stuff. So I ended up going out to LA and, um, Sia, the, Musician, see oh my God, so yeah. her vocal coach was out there. I found I don't know I don't remember how I found the vocal coach, but um, the protege of the vocal coach is who I ended up being with because they were working together. Wow. See his vocal coach and and this guy Dean. Shout out to Dean. I'll have to tag him in, in the post. <laughs> um, but but so cool. I spent one hour session uh, then, and I think I did two maybe two remote sessions, but that one live session, I learned more about singing in an hour, um, that, than I had learned, like just doing it for, you know, for, right. for years and years and years and just being able to, to realize, Oh, I can hit some of these higher things. It's just the way that I'm, um, doing it is, is not correct. Right. Um, and I feel like I should probably take guitar lessons now because I know enough about the basics of it that I feel like maybe I'll be able to pick up, technical techniques that I wouldn't have been able to had I, you know, had I been just coming in raw and just, I just want to play a song. Yeah. I think um, one, of the, one of the best, best things my mentor said to me was, um, he was like, I have not said, and I will never say you can't make it on your own, but you'll make it a lot faster with me. Hmm. And he was just saying like, you, you know what you're doing, like what you're doing is good. And like, that's all nice. But like, there's stuff you, you w- can and will be doing in the future and I can get you there faster. Hmm. So yeah, like, I can teach you some techniques. I can teach you a place to start basically. Yeah, Give you like an avenue to learn. Who was, um, it, there's some, I think it was, uh, someone was talking about books. Like, like, yeah, you can you can get far in life without reading books or whatever, or, or reading the, the information that all these other people have left for, yeah. you know, future generations in right. books and in audio recordings and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's like a short code or a cheat code, yeah. um, to jump ahead years and years in what you're doing. It's, yeah. Years um, of wisdom. Yeah. So, and, and I've talked about this in the past too, like you may have, um, the talent, you may have the natural kind of ear for music and, and all that sort of thing, but it's like learning a language. And I think if you've, you've gotten some of the technique, some of the technical knowledge, um, and you have that natural inclination towards it, it just makes it that much easier to communicate what's in your head and what you're, you're trying to get out, um, into the world by doing that, by kind of taking the, you know, by getting there a little quicker. Absolutely. I hate I hate the narrative of like oh like learning music theory like made me not creative. It's <laughs> right. like, I hate that narrative. It's so yeah, stupid. well, it's like music theory helps you communicate to other musicians. Here's like my my problem with it, not necessarily learning music theory, right? Because if you go out and you seek it on your own, right? Mm-hmm. If you're like a musician mm-hmm. and you suck and you're like, I want to learn music theory so I yeah. can become a better version of what I'm already interested Absolutely. in doing. That's great I, I love music theory and, and that schools for that and there's you know there's teachers teaching it what i find um can kind of teach 
creativity out of some people is the way that I think schools sometimes treat music programs and they give you, you know, you can only choose like woodwind instruments or whatever, or trumpets yeah. or that sort of thing. That's and then the songs fair. that they play are always these like marching band or the, the school orchestra songs. And it's boring for kids, I think, mm -hmm. sometimes to learn that. And the theory I, I almost think should come later to just banging on an instrument and screaming and making noise like that should come first you should Absolutely. instill the joy of it and wh why it's expressive and then be like okay now you want to make something that someone else wants to actually listen to right <laughs> now that you have a love for screaming and banging on your instrument and, and you know uh doing all that and making noise now here's the theory of, uh, of how you can make it sound good whereas someone <laughs> where someone will actually want to listen to what you're expressing you know yeah even if it's not good like if, if it's truth and it's the way you you want to express yourself i think that's the best way and like if you're learning music theory you can it's just to help you say your truth better yeah. you know like and hone in those feelings but and, that's where i think some people get though like the theory like teaches the creativity out of them it's because yeah. sometimes in school like the people aren't in, interested in music to begin I, with yeah i gave up and on they trumpet. feel <laughs> yeah they feel like they're, yeah you're and a then musician I up, and then i picked up a guitar and i was yeah. like this is my shit i, like I watched this. i watched it happen with my my son as a matter of fact he got into drums and he was playing drums for a while and he was really into it really into the music thing and as soon as he started playing um music in high school that's when he was like, like oh, just, yeah. And mm. I think it was because it just became like homework, you know, it became yeah. like another thing that's, that's just, oh, I got to do this again, like, and practice. Yeah. Whereas like for you and I, I feel like we're, we're very similar. Most musicians, I loved it so much that I was willing to go sit in my room alone for hours and yeah. hours and just play until my fingers were like, you know, yeah, like fried. Yeah, absolutely. Those are like the most like memorable nights of practice or just like when you, your hands just hurt at the end of the night, you like lay down and your like <laughs> yeah. hands like shaking from like doing bar chords yeah, for that you feel long. Like, you like, feel like you have arthritis <laughs> yeah. and you're only 13 years old. Yeah. You like look down at your hand. It's just naturally, it's just, this is just my natural right. state. It's I don't like know a claw. Cameras on. Right. Yeah. It's just, this is just, I'm not, I'm not flexing my hand at all. It's just like that. <laughs> so let's do this. We're coming, we're coming up a little bit on it. Got a few. So, so let's, um, let's talk about what you're going to play. Cause you know, you had a song prepared here. Um, what is this song about? If you wouldn't it's mind about telling my partner, Rin, oh, Rin. I love so much. Who did not, not come out today. They're not here today. They're having uh, fun with their friend Bridget. All right. But, but, but we miss you Rin. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, hopefully Rin will be able to see this uh, when, yeah. we, when we post it. But so this is about Rin. Yeah, this is a song about Rin. It's um, I love this song because it's it's like it's the one of the only love songs I actually like. Like hmm. like I've written a lot of love songs over like the ten twelve years or whatever I've been writing music, and I've hated almost all of them, if not all of them, <laughs> up until this one. I like the, all the break all the breakup songs. But. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting too because we, we've talked about that too. Like, I almost feel like love songs without the uh, the the yang to their ying, so without like the dark side of love mm. in them, they almost like they, they're toxically sweet, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, if it's too much, like I'm so in love. If it doesn't have like the it's like I melancholy. love you, I love you, but I hate you. There's even a song, right? I love you. I was I love you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you. We like rings. We hope that you have no more breakout songs. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yes. Yes. So, so. Well, yeah. I mean, this one has that melancholy vibe to it. The song is called Never, and it's kind of just about how, like, of all the love I've experienced, um, I've never experienced, like, what I feel like love is supposed to be hmm. until I met Ren. So it's kind of like, never, never experienced this, never experienced that until you. That's pretty amazing. So, yeah. Hmm. All right, so before we uh, before we switch over to you uh, playing the song for us, I'm going to do another shameless go down and subscribe, uh, like, comment. The comments really help with the algorithms. You know, the YouTubes like to make you pay for stuff. Same thing with Facebook. If you're not if you're not uh, getting engagement on them, then they they're like, give me some money, and then we'll we'll help you help people actually see it. <laughs> right. um, but uh, we do have the merch coming out. I've I've made it. And I'm hope, hoping that I'll be able to get the link up um, shortly. Maybe on this video will be the first time you'll be able to purchase some uh, Songwriters Couch merch. Um, 
And Matt, what do you want to uh, plug here too? Why don't we give Ooh, your yes, Instagram yes, and yes. what have you? So my Instagram is Matt Plessinger Solo Guitar. That's the platform I'm most active on right now. Um, I have a show on December 15th at Seed and Stone. It's the Songwriter Showcase. Yeah. And then I have a show December 30th at Love and Cup with my good friend Denali Reese. Oh, awesome. Or Cerisco. Yeah. She got married. Cerisco. That's right. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> I, do have the, I do have it updated on my on my board there. Yes. Yeah, because Denali will be on the show, too. <laughs> she got married. Sorry. <laughs> it's Mrs. Cerisco now. That's right. <laughs> um, we have a show on December 30th, um, day before New Year's Eve at Love and Cup. Be there, be square. It's going to be great. All right. And what's the name of the song one more time? The song's called Never. Never. So uh, let's hear it. Everybody, 
I think a single tear is falling down my, <laughs> my eyes as we speak. It was a beautiful song, man. Oh, thank Holy you. Holy mackerel. <clears throat> well, I want to say, Matt, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having um, me. We're going to get you an album out, I think. We're going to have to <laughs> figure that out somehow or another, right? Yeah, we need to get them recorded and, and, and get you out there. And, and for everyone that's uh, watched and listened today, and for everyone that has been watching and listening, I want to thank you because you're the most important part of the podcast. So we really appreciate it. And I love bringing uh, you guys new uh, musicians for you guys to check out and new music. And, and uh, we got some exciting uh, guests coming up into the new year. Um, this is the pre Thanksgiving episode, but it'll be released afterwards. Um, so hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving. I'm trying to like <laughs> think in the past now. Is it, uh, hope uh, you gorged. But yeah, yeah. Hope, hope, uh, you guys are now dieting after the, the amount of food you ate, uh, and you're eating healthy and, and prepping all your meals for Christmas. And, um, and your holidays and uh again thank you all for for watching and listening matt love you man love you too brother Thanks we'll for see you me. at the uh the next show and um or at the show on december 15th yes, uh sir. or singer songwriter showcase and thank you to is that on the is that on the camera thank you to lucky buzz and seed and stone for sponsoring the show and we'll see you guys on the next one later later <laughs> i drink all